Greetings, friends. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today I'm going to discuss a very old video over five years ago about a theorem I proved, which uh, coincidentally is one of the theorems required for set theory to work. And yet the theorem proves that set theory has to be flawed. Let's begin. So, uh, around about 20th of April two th 2016, I produced this video, and as you can see, it's not very well liked. It's got 20 dislikes and 9 likes. And the theorem that I proved is that there are no infinite sets. So, we go on three assumptions, or three definitions rather, not assumptions. The members of a set are distinct. That's the first one. They have to be distinct. The second one is set by definition contains all its elements or members. Well, if it has any elements, it must contain them, yes. So that also includes the empty set, just in case somebody thinks that that's not true because of the empty set. And then it's a fact that mainstream academics agree with statement A and statement B. So statement A says there is no greatest natural number. And statement B says the set of natural numbers contains all the natural numbers. So now, what you require to prove the statement is to show that A and B statements are mutually exclusive. In other words, they cannot both be true. One has to be true and the other false. Okay, that's all you can have. So... Now, once we show that A and B are, are mutually exclusive, then a contradiction exists and only one can be correct. So, in, if, if A is true, then there is no greatest natural number, right? So, and of course, mainstream academics agree that there is no greatest natural number, so A must be true. But if B is true, then there must be a greatest natural number for the set of natural numbers in order to contain all of its elements, okay? This contradicts A, which states that there is no greatest natural number. So the set would have to contain all of its elements. You can't just write something in set builder notation, which uh, states a property of the natural numbers, that each natural number is a multiple of the unit. That's about all you can say. That's not sufficient to say, to prove that an infinite set exists because you cannot find the greatest one. So, since you cannot find a greatest natural number, it follows that B must be false, and hence A is the only true statement, right? Now, given that B defines an infinite set, and B is proven mutually exclusive to A, it follows there is no such thing as an infinite set, and we are done. And this is the kind of reasoning that the ancient Greeks uh, used in their methods and in their mathematics. They had a clarity of thought unlike any who came before or after them. They were, to put it mildly, unbelievably brilliant. I mean, even the modern Greeks are idiots compared to them. Okay, so uh, you can't even look at the modern Greeks. Uh, they're, they're not even a shadow of their ancestors, if indeed they are the descendants of the ancient Greeks, which I sometimes uh, question myself, being 55% Greek. I'm not so sure that, you know, I'm not so sure of that fact. And anyway, I'm not going to go off on a tangent there, but what I'm saying is that there is no such thing as an infinite set. And you, you need an infinite set in set theory. It's one of the important... Uh, axioms okay in fact there's the axiom of infinity i think it's number six but i'm not really cared because zfc is a bunch of crap anyway so that's really all i wanted to show tell you and i'll provide a link to this uh, article that was used in this latest video and so if you're not already a subscriber become a subscriber click like on these videos because i'm doing the aspiring young mathematicians of the future a favor by exposing all these uh, ill-formed ideas and 
showing you that you can do mathematics and calculus without any ill-formed concepts. So once again, this is a new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.